The House of Representatives may soon pass a bill for an act to permit Nigerians from the age of 18 to carry arms for self-defense. A bill that, to that effect entitled Firearms Amendment Bill has already been sponsored by Adijuru Adeogun. Now, this contradicts Mr. President's order to security services to shoot at any civilian bearing arms. Well, to discuss this with me this evening is um, legal practitioner Tunji Abdullah Hamid. Thank you very much for joining us, Tunji. Thank you for having me. Good Great. evening. Let me just go straight. Let me cut the chase. 18-year-olds, uh, that's, that's the minimum age to carry a firearm if this act were to become a thing. Um, and this is all done in self-defense because of the level of insecurity in the country. And I ask, how realistic is this in the first instance, especially in a country where we're trying to still deal with trigger-happy police officers? Exactly my position. I, I, I think, uh, just like you said, it's a contradiction of the president's uh, uh, was it called? well, as, as it is now, it has not been passed, so we can't say it's a contradiction. But you see, if we allow our, uh, everybody to carry gun in Nigeria the way we have, if I assure you there will be more anarchy in the country, there will be more killing, there will be more deaths, and people will be more, if I, everybody will be taking law into his hands. We are in a country where people are not even allowed to carry gun. Guns are already everywhere. So if, assuming you now allow people to carry gun, and people with this uh, kind of our economic situation where everybody is uh, aggrieved, everybody is angry, there were any small aggression, they, 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 there will be an accidental discharge. Just like you said, our happy uh, trigger uh, officers are a good example of that. Because uh, when you have any slight argument with them, the next thing you hear is boo, and they will say there's an accidental discharge. So uh, it would be dangerous for us to say, to allow everybody in Nigeria to carry gun as it is, as it is today. Though it may be, uh, it may be, people may be saying, look, people are, Give it, uh, terrorizing us are able to do that because of their of, of their of the, of the fact that they have access to gun or they have sophisticated weapons yeah i, I think it will create more more uh arm than good if that is allowed as, as it is today nigeria is not right for that uh, kind of a uh, policy i i think i will not support that now still talking about the fact that this if it becomes an act of sorts might be in contravention of the law now you're a lawyer um, tell us exactly what the law says about arms. I, I mean, I've, I know the fire, there's a Firearms um, Act uh, already that is in force. Uh, if we were to introduce this into the law as an act, do we need some form of um, uh, amendment of that particular Firearms um, Act? Yeah, I, I, that, that's what, exactly what they are doing. That's what the, the, the proposal will be. When they propose that, uh, if that proposal is made, then they need to go through uh, 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 the, 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 the normal procedure in the house, and that, that will amend the existing uh, firearm act or existing law regarding a uh, banning of a uh, kind of arm by citizen. So uh, it, will not, it will not be contradictory because uh, when, except, except there is no uh, bill being passed, if the bill is passed into law, definitely that they will have taken uh, care, care of that by amending the existing uh, firearm uh, arm law to allow for individuals or everybody to carry arms. So there won't be any, 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 any conflict in that regard because they will not just pass, pass another law. They will definitely amend the existing law to reflect that position to ensure that everybody carries arms. Now, I, I go back to the basis of this, um, the reason why this bill was even brought in in the first instance, which is the level of insecurity that we're facing as a country. Now, I, I'm just, I, I was debating with myself today and I was asking, why come up with a bill like this when we have security agencies, we have paramilitary agencies. We even have security um, agencies that are already set up by states. They're more like, um, uh, you know, we have the Amotekun, we have the, the guys in the north. We even have some in some states that are not necessarily um, like the police, but they are helping the police. Why do we need, I mean, I was talking about the NCDC yesterday. These guys are armed. Uh, and we're complaining about how stretched, overstretched the police is and the JTF. Wh why are we not using all of these people? Of course, I think the Customs Service also carries arms. If we're saying that we should have this bill come up and that in self-defense we should shoot, what if, for example, 
um, we start shooting people because we think that every person who looks like a, a Fulani is a herder. How do we control that? I, I don't even understand that particular direct, that directive because I, I know those who are carrying uh, arms and killing people are now found on the street. They are somewhere in the bush. So if you want to kill uh, anybody carrying a AK-47 or any other sophisticated arm, you have to go inside the bush and they pursue them. So I don't know what they have been doing all, all this while because I, I know the our military have been pursuing them I, because uh, we are not able to, to get results because we always wait for them to attack before uh, uh, responding. So we are not even, we are not working towards attacking them back. So the issue of, uh, if you see anybody carry up, it, it, it's, 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 it's in conflict with the law of the country. Uh, yeah, you cannot just keep anybody, anybody just, just see because there's a title for the president that anybody who, carry, who, who, who carries arms or you see him carry arms, on, you just shoot him. That, that, would be, that would be in conflict with the existing law because the law does not allow that. There are procedures for when, when you see anybody contravening law to be followed. You must allow him to face the trial in court and to see what is reason before he can be executed. That will create room for people taking law into their hands and even do, uh, they just shoot their enemy and on, on, on the ground that they, they find him carrying a, a, a firearms or, or, or gun. So hmm. I think I think that 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 I, I, I directed to me as far as I'm concerned, I I, I don't buy it. It's not a, it will not help our, our, our circumstance. The, those who are proposing that uh, everybody should be allowed to carry arms, they are doing so probably because of the heat of the moment. People hmm. believe that uh, we we are being attacked, we are being killed. People are being killed because those who are killing them have the advantage hmm. by virtue of their firearms. So if everybody, they are, they are, they are position is that if everybody is allowed to carry arms, then in, the, in that in that there won't be any. Uh, body being uh, it will be fire for fire and then and when we say fire for fire in this guy like i said in nigeria we are not mature enough as i'm, as I'm sorry to to do that because uh, any simple in fact husband and wife fights you will see people shooting themselves hmm. the a, a, a child will just uh, be angry with his father and he will shoot his father and them or, or mother so i i, I think uh, you see outside ordinary argument people started using cutlasses and the uh, other, other, other uh, dangerous uh, weapon to, to fight. So if you now allow God, what do, what do we expect that will happen? So I think I will not be in support of that for now because our economy, our situation in the country is not, does not allow for that. There are a lot of tension, there are a lot of ag aggression. People are angry, people are not happy. So if you now allow people to carry guns, you are giving them, you are giving them more power to create more crime in the name of uh, I'm protecting myself. So uh, it's, it's good to protect yourself. It's good to, to be on uh, at a lot. It's good, it's good to, to also have a, yeah, even even when this is allowed, it's not become a a, 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 a kind of a, a the, 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 the your 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 ability to, to purchase a a, a bigger uh, firearms. I was about so you I was be, about to competition. Yeah, People I was, can buy more arms. I was about to come in there. Um, let's talk about the regulations of uh, I mean the issue of proliferation of small arms already in the country. In 2017, we recorded our if not 2016, we recorded our first. Um, the first tranche of um, ammunition that came in, nobody was there to say, I brought the guns in. We were unable to trace and track who brought these guns into the country. One was intercepted in Israel, or rather in South Africa, coming from Turkey. As we speak today, we're still unable to understand who ordered for those um, ammunition to be brought into the country. Uh, in 2019, we also experienced another one that was intercepted in the middle of a city by soldiers who suspected that the police person who was sitting in front of the car, or rather the truck that was carrying this ammunition, was not a real police officer. And alas, they were correct. So we have not really been able to regulate arms and small arms that are coming into the country. Will the government, if this be becomes an act, be, how will they be able to regulate? Because, I mean, there's a long list of things that you need to do. The bill states that a person shall be granted a license or permit uh, um, if at the time of the um, application the person is at least 18 years of age, has a psychological evaluation, um, is uh, there's a certificate uh, that would be gotten from a hospital to show that he is okay in the head. Um, I mean, it's a long list. Um, there has to be vision quality certificate uh, and the police has to give you a clearance certificate. The governor of your state or the, the IG of police has to give a nod. I mean, it's a long list of things that need to be considered. 
especially at a time like this when Nigerians are unable to feed, they are unable to, um, their purchasing power is low, should we be considering guns instead of making sure that people are safe in their homes? I think that people are saying that because they are thinking that uh, if everybody is allowed to carry a gun, maybe people, those who are terrorizing us, will not do that again. Uh, knowing that other, uh, the person you are going to meet also have a gun in his, uh, in, in his or her possession. So, but like you said, we, we are in a situation today where the, 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 the uh, carrying of uh, arm are, are, are restricted. Uh, you have to carry it by lines, with license. And just by that, we have people, we have guns everywhere. Online license or online license, I don't know. So assuming, as now assuming that we now allow everybody to carry gun without any license, what 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 will happen? Government is not able to control the one they are able to license now. The one they license, you know, the few they say they should be licensed and they should obtain, apply for, and obtain with all those uh, lists you've, you've mentioned. The government is not able to control the activity of those who are holding those guns. Or, or what will now happen if everybody is not allowed to? To, to carry gun. That means the government will not even be in charge again. We're not going to be able to control anybody again to do anything. Ordinary people who are fighting. Recently, we saw people fighting in front of a, a, a camp salem with a, 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 a dangerous weapons. The police in front of the police. Camp salem used to be the headquarters of the police uh, in Nigeria. They, they they were looking at them. Nobody can do anything. So imagine if everybody has gone there. You can imagine what will happen. There will be more killing. There will be more other kids. There will be more death. And there will be more murder. People would just on it, just say I just ate him. As as or because he's just cheating on me, just like a husband and wife or so so something happen. You just be in Nigeria. We are not. Uh, finally, I would just like to address another issue now. What as a as a lawyer, as a citizen of this country, seeing all the things that are happening. Of course, if you have been watching the news, you would see what happened to certain citizens in Oshun State uh, as at today. Um, two days ago, it was Kaduna, and the list is endless. These people keep coming and abducting people, killing, ransacking, um, just destroying things. And they will do this and leave even before security agencies um, arrive on the scene. If you were to sit on the table with Mr. President and our service chiefs, what would you be advising? What would be your two cents on the recent uh, state of insecurity in the country? Yeah, yeah like this, the, the, we are having those teams said because of uh, inability of the government to 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 to, to do their to, to, to do their responsibility in line with the law. The major responsibility of the government is to provide welfare and security. We have we have insecurity in Nigeria because they are, we don't have enough uh, personnel. They, we don't have enough personnel. We don't have enough equipment. So there's no way we are just we are just run, running around the around the, we, can't, we can't we can't win this fight the way we are going. I'm sorry because to come in. I'm, I'm really police sorry. Or army or whatever that we have. I'm really sorry to badger you on this one, but. Just last week, the chief of defense staff had said that Nigeria has everything it takes, including the army, all of the armed forces, they have everything it takes to kick out Boko Haram, to deal with the bandits. They do not even need mercenaries. And here you are telling us that they're incapable. I mean, I'm, trying, I'm struggling to understand where you are coming uh, from. No, I'm not, I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm, I'm not saying they're incapable. I'm not saying they're incapable. I'm giving you the. They say they have the firepower. They have the equipment. They have, the equipment, they have, have the everything. Capacity, if given the, if given the and they environments, if they have the necessary facilities, the necessary equipment, their welfare are adequately taken care of. They, but, they, 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 they have the war with that. They have the power to confront this uh, and fight these people. But in a situation whereby we have an army that are angry, that are hungry, you will be at the war front. I will be thinking about how to pay school fees, how to pay rent. You be you will be thinking about your salary will be paid and has not been paid. You 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 have a weapon that is not even that cannot even confront ordinary uh, street arm robber, and, and you are facing people who are carrying a AK forty seven or who are carrying a sophisticated weapon. There is no way you can fight them. So the our military they are they are trying their best in the circumstances. But I don't I want to disagree with the chief of army staff that uh, they are not doing enough for them to be able to win. They are not providing enough 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 uh, enabling environment for these people who are fighting this war. They are just, I just pity those uh, I mean, at, at the war front. They are, they are doing their best in circumstances. But I, I think, I think uh, the government should do more if we want to have uh, more. And we should, we should recruit more. We don't have enough personnel. That is another one. We don't have okay. enough personnel. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you. I mean, we, have, we, have not been, we have not been recruiting all this while. And we have been talking about 
the, the little we have are, are with the PIP. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, Tunji Abdulamin is a, a legal practitioner. Unfortunately, this is all the time that we have to talk about this conversation, but we're hoping for the best in the future. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll take a short break to see what Nigerians have to say about these laws of bearing arms in the country. And when we return, I'd give you my take. I don't think we are ready for that. I don't think the country, uh, the country, the society is advanced to that level because there are some, they, they, they see, we see how we are still like uh, some steps behind other countries because you can see even people without arms nowadays, once they have little power, they want to exercise that power, they want to make sure they, they, uh, they oppress others. So with guns, with arms now, you have a lot of crimes that you'll be won't be able to cope with in this country. Not at all, oh God, it's of this stuff. Not, uh, no, no advantage to the citizens at this present time, mm. politically wise and the degree. We can't abide the law in Nigeria because our, 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 our locality is not, is very poor. Because you know some people, you may avoid, uh, maybe that people you, you, you offend them in, in one another, because they, 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 they have said we should be using ammunition. They can bring ammunition and shoot and can do anything and, and do. So we don't, I'm not sure we can, that thing will happen in Nigeria, can happen in Nigeria. It is premature for a kind of polity. People can't even manage ordinary cell phone. How can they manage uh, firearms? The, 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 the consequences will be too severe. The country will, will be turned completely into a chaos. There will be no order. There will be killing everywhere. So I don't support it at all. I don't think it is thinkable. Here's my take. Again, terrorists hit not just in the north, but this time in Oshun, with families left at the mercy of these gun-totting um, killers. We're no longer safe. These attacks, these killings, these destructions and abductions are on the increase daily. So I wonder, what really motivates these evil people other than money? Now the House of Representatives is saying that, uh, well, it's said to possibly be considering a bill for acts that could permit Nigerians to carry guns. Is that really what we need? Is that really what our country has come to? How will carrying guns help us to deal with this level of insecurity that we're facing? Are we saying that our security agencies are at their wit's end? Or are we saying that the once most powerful armed forces on the continent is unable to deal with a bunch of insurgents, kidnappers and bandits? Will, will we continue to live in fear and sleep with one eye open because we don't know when they could possibly hit? Look at how they treat those they abduct. Imagine the hell that these people have to go through. How long will we continue to endure this? Dear Mr. President, is this the safe and secure Nigeria that you promised us? I'm Mariana Kong thanking you for being part of Plus Politics. Have a good evening.